Matt DiBenedetto has experienced a fall from grace within a short time period. He went from a lovable underdog to one of the most hated drivers in the sport. He got the boot from the Wood Brothers in the 2021 season and after getting the boot, he didn't handle it very well. Then there was other things said by him that ruined his image. He went from a cup driver driving for a B-minus team at most to driving for a mid-tier truck series ride. Even before all of this happened, people were already wanting Matty D out of the 21. People felt like he was underperforming in that ride and he should be getting better results. In general, people made it seem like that Matty D was pretty bad at the Wood Brothers, but in my opinion, I don't think he was not that bad. I'm not some Matty D super fan, but I feel like that some people's expectations were a little too high. It's a few things I want to take a look at when it comes to the 21 car and the drivers that have driven that car since 2015 when the Wood Brothers got an alliance with Penske. So one thing that everyone brings up about the 21 car is that it's pretty much a fourth Penske car in a way. In 2015, the Wood Brothers formed an alliance with Team Penske. Their cars are prepared at the Penske race shop. This is why everyone claims that it's pretty much a fourth Penske car. But one thing that's still unknown to this day is that we don't know how strong of an alliance that the Wood Brothers have with Penske. Is the 21 car really getting everything that the Penske cars are getting? It's so many small to mid tier teams that have alliances with big teams, but they don't perform exactly like those top teams. JTG has an alliance with Hendrick and they run mid pack for the most part. Gold Fast Racer had an alliance with Stuhlhaus Racing and still ran in the 30s. Those are just a few examples. Just because the Wood Brothers got an alliance with Penske doesn't mean that they are exactly getting everything that the Penske cars are getting, even with it being prepared in the Penske shop. Now I want to compare Matty D performance to the two other drivers that have driven the 21 since that Penske alliance and that's Ryan Blaney and Paul Menard. But before I do that, I want to list off Matty D's stats in the 21. In 2020, he didn't win, had three top fives, 11 top tens with an average finish of 14.8. He also made the playoffs that year and proceeded to finish 13th in the points. In 2021, he didn't win, had three top fives, nine top tens, and had an average finish of 16.9 and missed the playoffs that year, finishing 18th in the points. You would think he would have improved from 2020, but him and that team regressed. Matty D did come close to a win a few times with the Wood Brothers. In 2020, in the fall Talladega race, he came up short right at the line getting beat by Denny Hamlin. Then in the spring Talladega race in 2021, he had the lead taking the white flag, but made a mistake moving up high and Brad Keselowski proceeded to pass him and went on to win the race. One thing that people seem to forget is that Matty D found himself running in the top 10 in the 21 car quite a bit. Even though he lacked in top 10 finishes, he was consistently there, but throughout the race, the car would fade and he would usually finish outside the top 10. That was the theme of Matty D time with the Wood Brothers. Who was his crew chief throughout most of his time at the Wood Brothers? Greg Irwin, who in my opinion is a bad crew chief. He has a total of five career wins and never spent a full season as a crew chief until he got paired with Paul Menard in 2018. He's worked with some very talented drivers like Greg Biffle, A.G. Armadega, and Robbie Gordon, but never elevated these drivers for performances. I mentioned Paul Menard not long ago. Yes, he drove the 21 in 2018 and 2019. And to keep this brief, he didn't do shit. Didn't make the chase in both of his years driving for them and perform mediocre in typical Paul Menard fashion. He didn't have as many top 10s and top 5s as Matty D, but his average finish during his second year was slightly better than Matt's second year with the Wood Brothers, even though Matty D finished one spot higher in the standings. A driver that did do better than Matty D was Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney's first full-time ride was in the Wood Brothers 21, and his rookie year, he had zero wins, three top fives, nine top tens with an average finish of 18.5 and finished 20th in the points. Blaney, by the way, did have a little bit of cup experience before 2016. He made two starts in 2014 and made 15 starts in 2015. In 2017, Blaney really improved, getting four top fives, 14 top tens, made the playoffs, and finished ninth in the, in the standings. But the thing that stands out is that he won a race. He got his first career win at Pocono beating veterans like Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvey, which is impressive. Blaney crew chief wasn't Greg Irwin, but Jeremy Bullins. Now, Jeremy Bullins is not some long-time successful crew chief. He and Blaney actually moved up together to the Cup Series. In Xfinity, they had success and already had chemistry when they came up to Cup. 
Blaney did a pretty good job in 2017. You can't argue that after looking at his stats, but people act like Blaney completely shitted on Matty D when he was in the 21. It's not like he set some high bar in the first place. He had a few more top 10s than Matt Benedetto and actually won a race. It's not like Blaney won tons of races and made a deep playoff run. And when Blaney left the 21 and went to the Penske 12 car, it's not like he set the world on fire since he's been there. He's been driving the 12 car since 2018 and while he has won at least one race since he's been in the 12 car, he hasn't won multiple races until 2021 when he scored three wins that season. All in all, I don't know where people got these high expectations from when it comes to the 21 Wood Brothers car. It hasn't been a top contender in years. Even with a Penske Alliance, I don't see that car being a top notch contender for the cup championship. Once again, I'm not some big Matt the Better Dettle fan, but I feel like the expectations placed on him was over the top. He didn't do as bad as people made it out to be. Out of the four drivers that's been behind the wheel of the 21 car ever since it's been aligned with Penske, I would rank Matt the Better Dettle second so far. Yeah, it's not an impressive list, but some people would say that Matt the Better Dettle is a scrub, and really, he's not. People don't like him for his behavior in 2021, and if you feel that way, then that's fine. But to say that he's a terrible driver because he says some things that you don't agree with is just nonsense. So what's next for Matt the Better Dettle? Well, he's in the truck series driving for a mid-pack team. What Matt needs to do is that he needs to rebuild his image and prove to people that he can win in NASCAR. I doubt if he finds his way back into the Cup Series, but he can really impress in the lower series like the Truck Series. If he can win, that would be huge. If he can build this Rackley team up to be top contenders, that would really make people look at Matt the Better Dettle in a much more positive light. Who knows? He can probably become a Truck Series legend one day like Ron Hornaday or Ty Bodine. Drivers who never won the Cup but made their names be known in the Truck Series. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. So what's your thoughts on Matt the Better Dettle? Do you feel like that he underperformed in the 21? Do you think he can make it back to Cup? How you think his truck career will go? Let me know in the comment section. I'm gonna go ahead and roll up out of here. Y'all have a good one. Peace.